your boy Joseph on the track. Let's go. I put the city on top of my back. And it went way, way, way up. Like the D-line, I just go for my set. Better be having they wait up. We the ones turning it up to the mix. All that hate came days up. Cause we went way, way, way up. Never just way, way, way Hello and welcome to week seven of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and our game of the week tonight took us out to Maynard where a young Mustangs team hosted Round Rock. Last season, these two teams finished second and third in District 25-6A. The game they played against each other back then, it was close. It was a 10 point win for the Dragons. Now both teams entered the third week of this year's district play, knowing a win over a playoff team from a year ago could send their season in the right direction. It's going to be really physical, yeah. Our offensive line is really excited to play that kind of size. Speed, a lot of speed, hard mouth football. Take it to them early and finish off strong. Looking at Round Rock, you know, they're, they're, they're a talented team. I don't think they were where they were last year, and I, I believe we can go out there and play with them. The sideline is a big thing for us. We got to bring energy on the sidelines rather than putting blame on people, stuff like that. So all positive energy on the sidelines. Coming off a tough loss, I mean, I think it's time to move forward and uh, try to make a run for playoffs. It is Round Rock versus Maynard in our game of the week. Now, Maynard has some athletes, but they're young. Round Rock's Mason Cochran is a third year starter. In high school years, he's older than the Golden Bachelor. And that experience paid off here. Nobody was open, so Mason ran it in. The Mustangs responded in a hurry. Jason Zardavets to Cameron Lewis, and quarterbacks love this. Just toss it to the fast guy and watch him win the track meet. The game was tied and Maynard was moving, but Round Rock has future Notre Dame defender Leonard Moore on that's their side. When you're in a bind, ask Lenny for some more. Leonard with a leaping, twisting interception. So nice we get to see it again in slow-mo. Check that out, very nice. A 38-yard catch and run from Mark Hiramoru helped the Dragons take a two-score lead into the break. Round Rock goes on to win this one. Final score is 42 to 13. My friend Corey Mose is literally on the field Field right now talking to the Dragons. We're going to hear from him and from them a little later tonight in Friday Football Fever. Guys, we'll stay in the same district for our next matchup. 5-0 Vandegrift playing 3-2 McNeil. Now last week, the Mavs took down previously undefeated Vista Ridge. It was McNeil's first district win in over a year. So the question is, does this year's McNeil story include back-to-back -back upsets? Let's see. Well, the Viper struck first. The Van Grip offense made some noise, like all of our cell phones on Wednesday. Somebody send an emergency alert. Deuce Adams and Miles Coleman are one of the scariest combos in town. That's Coleman's ninth touchdown and number 15 for Adams. Maverick defender Cameron Green had sticky fingers in a good way, like after eating a bunch of wings or picking off a second down pass. Nice play, but Van Grip remains unbeaten. The Vipers win this one 42 to three to the scoreboard for the first time tonight. And let's go ahead and round out that district with the first game on this board. And that's a close one, a four point win for Stony Point over Cedar Ridge. Final score in that game, 21 to 17. San Marcus went down south to the San Antonio area. They played Shirts Clemens and Clemens gets the win in that one. Final score, 48 to 41. More scores coming your way. Hutto, man, they came out the gate great, but they have been struggling since week one. Those struggles continue, but they can get it turned around. Harker Heights beats Hutto 44 to 35. And Weiss, look at them. Want to stay unbeaten, and it looks like they will. They are up on Coppers Cove 42 to 7 in the fourth quarter of that game. Dripping Springs hosting Aikens. Tiger sophomore Merrick Bloomgren took a little pop pass and popped into the end zone. I'm a fan of the unexpected pop in. Shout out Cosmo Kramer. Now here's the play that we watched over and over again in the sports offense that slowed down so we can grasp it like Kyle Cook grasped the ball. Drip wins its fifth in a row, 48 to nothing, the final score out there. To Bible Stadium where Rouse celebrated Down Syndrome Awareness Month. They did a few cool things this evening, including inviting students with Down Syndrome to run out of the tunnel with the team. I love that. On the field against Belton, well, Justin Cannon loved this. He found the end zone two times in the first half, and after the second score, he teamed up with Amari Haywood to show off some celebration. Now, I don't know if this is a Street Fighter or a Dragon Ball Z, but it looks like it ended with a Hadouken right there. This game ends with a two-score win for Rouse, 32 to 20, the final. Let's go back to the scoreboard. More finals coming your way. Eastview. Patriots on top of the Glen Grizzlies, 42-38. That game is final. A&M Consolidated came to town, and they're leaving with a win. They beat Hendrickson, 
to three. More scores coming your way. Oh no, another local team fall into some guys who are playing us from, uh, from out of town. New Braunfels Canyon beats Hayes 36-18, doubled them up. That's a final score. And McCallum tops Northeast, trying to keep that second place in that district alive. Uh, McCallum wins this one 49-3. to That score is a final as well. Guys, we have updated you on 12 games so far. We have much more left to show you. Scores, highlights, our band of the week. And don't forget, we are still going live to our game of the week. Coming up next in Friday Football Fever. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. Now, if you were with us a moment ago, you got to see the highlights from our game of the week. You know that Round Rock beat Maynard 42 to 13. The Dragons get a road win, an important district win, and they did it all in front of my friend Corey Mose. Corey joins us now from the stadium out there in Maynard. Corey, I know you just had a chance to chat with the Dragons. How are they feeling after that huge win? I mean, you already know they're feeling sensational, Jeff. They put on a show for your boy out here at Maynard High School. But when I was talking to Round Rock earlier this week, they mentioned how they wanted to focus on physicality against this Mustang squad. And boy, did they show it on offense, scoring over 40 plus points. But I was more surprised with their defensive effort. They were flying around, hitting boys hard, holding Maynard to just 13 points. I was able to talk to defensive end Asher Chang after the game and a couple of his homies to talk about their effort in winning 42 to 13. Okay, well, congratulations on the dub. Y'all were able to help Maynard to just 13 points tonight. How were you able to accomplish that? I mean, it was just preparation throughout the week. It was no surprise. I feel like we could have still held them lower, but get a shutout and all that. But yeah, it's still, it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's why that's all I got to say. <laughs> and to win, though, you got to put some points on the board. Moose, you helped do that tonight. Do how are y'all able to be so effective on offense? Well, you see, what we did, we, were, we did what we were good at. The linemen did their job, and we kept a good attitude all night. And yeah, we were doing well. Well, hopefully y'all can carry over this defensive effort to next week against Vandegrift. How are y'all going to be able to do that? And what challenges do you feel like they'll face next week against y'all? Um, well, we're just going to follow our game plan and you know do what we've been coached to do. And I feel the challenge we're going to face is that we're all, we play hard. And next week, big matchup against yeah. Vandegrift, undefeated yeah. versus undefeated in district. What, what do you feel like it's going to take for y'all to win? And what do y'all need to improve from now until next Friday? Yeah, so I mean, I have a lot of respect for Coach Sanders and uh, Vandegrift. They, I mean, they do a phenomenal job there. There's a reason why they've been so successful, and uh, it's become a little a district rivalry. You know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, our kids love playing them. They love playing us. Um, but just, I mean, we just got to stick to the script, man, and yeah. keep the main thing the main thing, and just know that um, come Monday, just, just treat it like any other game. Just make sure that we practice hard and just trust our preparation and, and, uh, and trust our, our training. Well, before Monday, I want you to enjoy tonight. Yes, Congratulations sir. on the win yeah. and continue to be undefeated in district. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. So a big time matchup next week against Vandegrift. Undefeated in conference versus undefeated in conference. Can't wait for that one. But I'll tell you what, though, Jeff and Tyler. This Dragon team, they love to have fun after the game. We're right outside the locker room, and you could hear on the speakers, they played I Bet You Won't. And then we heard the first song, 
I walk up in the club, beat IP, little wipe me down. Like, okay, Round Rock, I see you out here. They, they turn, I almost have to walk into the locker room, man. I was about to turn up with them. <laughs> yep, yep, sounds like you, Corey, but I'm glad that you were able to make the live <laughs> shot and maybe we can add some of those songs to our rotation. Guys, it is time for our drive of the week. I'm welcoming in my friend Tyler Phil. I don't have those moves. I'm going to just keep it crystal clean here. Do you have those songs on your playlist? Do you recognize Probably those? not. Okay. Probably not. Okay. But I know, I know there's people out there who probably don't have those songs on their playlist well, either. might be a few who are downloading those songs right now. <laughs> probably. And, yeah, let's go ahead and move on, though. We had a great rivalry game that's going to be our drive of the week. So our drive of the week really was one of the shortest drives on the schedule. But anytime you have a rivalry game like this one, the drive is one where the music sounds a little louder, <laughs> the wind feels a little better against your face, and the tension is just perfect. The rivalry we're talking about is Cedar Creek versus Bastrop. Uh, this is what Texas high school football is all about, Double J. A showdown between the only two high schools in their school district. Bastrop, Cedar Creek, their campus is only 12 miles apart. And speaking of miles apart, so is this rivalry series. The Big Bad Bears entering tonight's matchup, winning 10 of the last 11 against the Eagles. That lone Eagles win coming back in 2019. Think Pink Night at Fast Drop Memorial Stadium. And I'll tell you what, all the Bears could do is think about winning. Eagles opening drive, fourth and one. They go for it, but Val Regalado really gets those Eagles back behind the line. Big turnover on downs. Very next play, Bears first offensive play of the game. Ladanian Marino breaks some ankles and then breaks free for the big time touchdown. Ideal start for the Bears later in the first. Still 7 nothing. Bass drop. Check out the freshman quarterback, Weston Nielsen. Talk about a ratings boost on third down. Hooks up with Keyshawn Moore. 74 yard score as the Bears score their fifth one of the season. Eagles remain winless 34 to 7. Cedar Park hosting College Station. I got to tell you guys, I love a rowdy student section. Strong student section and strong push at the goal line. Trey Hill gets over the hump. Trey and the O-line muscle in for six, but College Station is a powerhouse. These guys went to the state title game last year, and they're going back home with a win. The T-Wolves fall 56 to 28. Let's get some more scores coming your way right now. The scoreboard in front of you has two finals. One local winner, Liberty Hill beats San Antonio Vets Memorial 28-21, the final score there. Marlboro Falls can't quite hang with Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake wins that one 52-13. More scores coming your way. Taylor, oh, the Ducks go down against San Antonio Davenport, 59-42 the final. Burnett falls to Lamb Passes. The Badgers take this one 35-14. <laughs> The Lake Travis band playing x -Gog, give it to you. And that's exactly what the Cavaliers do to Dell Valley tonight. Nico Hamilton touchdown run. That makes it 21-0 Cavs in the first early second. How about sophomore kicker Braden Doan? 49-yard field goal is good as quarterback Chasten Ditta later finds the end zone, helping Lake Travis win its 10th straight against the Cardinals, 45-0. Elgin hosting Colleen Chaparral. Both teams entered the night one and one in district play. This is perfect tackling for him here. Wildcats Matthew Clear clearly knows what he's doing. See what you hit, wrap your arms, drive your feet. It doesn't get much better than that. Then running back Curtis McFarland snuck out of the backfield and found some open field. This catch and run led him deep down into opponent's territory and led to a field goal. But here's the play of the game. Final snap of the first half. Chaparral lobs one up to the corner. It's a one-handed catch for six. The local guys fall. Final score in this one, 42 to 26. Some more scores. Fredericksburg, the Billies, 49 to six win. That's how you do it. LaGrange, top in Smithville, 36, 21. More scores. Squero, top in Giddings, 55 to 14. Maynard New Tech, beating the Polar Bears of Austin Achieve, 54 to 16 no it says that one's in the third quarter sometimes you gotta take your contacts out then put them back in during the show wow and then figure out what you're seeing and that's how i saw that small little three and then the r and the d and that happened in in the 12 seconds that's unbelievable yeah one-handed impressive impressive got a contact guinness world <laughs> record right there contact me if you need some help uh -huh, you said i did that contact <laughs> uh, every, every week we celebrate a different local group as our friday football fever band of the week now this week that honor goes to the band 
from Bowie. Okay. The Bulldogs really wanted to tap into their Texan roots by playing what some might call a Lone Star Classic. I think you're gonna know this. Okay, okay. Take a listen. <laughs> Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. He's Tyler, I'm Jeff, and tonight at Nelson Field, LBJ lined up against some familiar faces, the guys from Lhasa. Until January of 2020, now these two programs were actually one program. Lhasa athletes wore purple. They were members of the Jaguars teams. Yeah, that split was certainly tough on some friendships, Jeff, but it did allow the Raptors to create their own identity. And this year, those Raptors entered the night with an impressive 4-1 and one record. But record aside, who could forget last year when the Jags forced those Raptors basically into extinction, 89 to nothing. Big night for Sopwell running back Kalen Crenshaw. Double C, around the outside, around the outside. <laughs> in for the touchdown. But Lassa not going down without a fight. From number one in purple to number one in white, Roman Edwards. I wonder if he often thinks about the Roman Empire. You know he does. QB keeper for the score. Eventually, most empires fall, though. Edwards drops back, gets picked Ooh. off. Solomon Moon, one small step for man, one giant leap for the Jags as LBJ ends up winning big 69 to 14. Crockett playing Navarro and the Cougars coaches get mm. pumped up doing some push ups <laughs> on the sideline. Good now, if they do push ups every time Cameron Dickey makes a big play. They're going to need some bigger sleeves soon. <laughs> the future Texas Tech Red Raiders scored on this 70 yard run where I counted nine forced missed tackles. Nine. Moments later on defense, guess who was at it again? Yep, Cameron Dickey playing safety. Last year I called him the best kept secret in Central Texas. He's not a secret any longer. Crockett wins this one 51 to 3. More scores coming your way right now. Lago Vista unable to hang with Geronimo Navarro. Uh, the Vikings fall 27 to 13. Wimberley stays perfect on the season. They beat Gerald 49 to 13. More scores here. Uh oh, Lano falls in this one 24 7 all day, every day. And Granger beats I Iola. Granger, I uh, want to say they're still undefeated 23 14. They're either undefeated or one loss. Either way, they are looking great at this point in the season. Congrats on another win for the Lions. Hey, let's get back to the highlights. A little private school battle between St. Andrews and 
Savio, Eagles beat the Highlanders by 20 last year. This year, much the same. Lane Riviere launching one deep to David Duplantier for the touchdown. Then later, it's Riviere again, this time finding Bobby Humphreys. Corner pocket for the scores. The Eagles fly higher than the Highlanders tonight. <laughs> Savio with the savvy win, 42 to 17. Bobby giving us a little point to the camera. I like it, man. Hey, small school ball here. Florence playing Lexington and looking for win number one on the season. But it didn't come tonight. Lexington receiver Owen Rhoda says, I can touch high places. He proved it on that touchdown catch. The Eagles went up early and stayed up. Florence falls 48 to 7. Scores. Johnson City. Smoke and Harper 61 to 14. Thrall falling to Holland by 20 points. 41-21, your final in that one. More scores, St. Joseph Academy. No chance again, Regents. Regents, the Knights, 50-22, to big win. And Hyde Park all over St. Michael's this evening, 31-6. to Welcome back and time to meet our Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Abacus Plumbing, Air Conditioning, and Electrical. Hey, hey. Position! Ah. Hey, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I think we got our swagger back! Yeah. Yeah. You were able to break out the huddle just now in the middle. What does that mean to you? What does this team mean to you? Uh, you know, leadership is, uh, leadership is uh, earned, not given. And so I feel like when you, when you work for leadership, it's just going to come to you. And this... Uh, Westwood defense was only giving up nine points a game coming into tonight. Y'all were able to put up 20 plus. How were y'all able to accomplish that? Like I said, we played our roles. Everyone played their role 100% and that opens up everything. And these guys, look at these guys. They love yeah. you. Yeah. Being able to put on for these guys behind you, what does that mean to you? You know, uh, so the class of 2024, they like took me under their wing ever since I was a freshman. So I promise the whole class of 2024 that I'll give him everything I got when it came to the varsity level, and that's what I'm going to continue doing because I love him. How do you think he did tonight? Yeah. Congratulations, AD, and congratulations for being our athlete of the week, man. Thank you.
time for our Big Save of the Week nominees. Now, each and every week, we see tons of plays that we actually literally huddle around laptops and watch over and over and over again. We did that with quite a few plays tonight. <laughs> yeah. Tyler and I put our heads together, and we picked out three that we want to show you again as our Big Save Play of the Week nominee. Now, our first play of the evening comes from our Game of the Week. Round Rock Leonard Moore is one of the top recruits in town. He's going to Notre Dame next year. And I think we can see why. The adjustment in midair, the hands to make the catch, and then tapping his toes like he's on Dancing with the Stars. Maybe one day. Lynn, a 10. Hey, Jeff, you say 10, I say 7. 7 for Bass Drops. LaDainian Marino out here. Oh, Ooh. breaking ankles. Ouch. And then turn it on the Jets for the touchdown. Beware of Marino and the Bears. 34 7 win over their rivals, Cedar Creek. Play number three comes courtesy of Crockett's quarterback, safety punter, team leader, everything. Cameron Dickey can do it all, and he shows a little bit of everything on this play. Strength to run through arm tackles, vision to create bad angles for the defense, and the speed to finish the 70-yard touchdown. Texas Tech is getting a good one. Guys, I just posted those three nominees on my, my Twitter, my X page, whatever we're calling it now, at Jeff Jones Sports. You can vote there, and we will reveal the winner Tuesday in our 6 o'clock show. For Tyler and everybody who works hard to put this show on, I'm Jeff. Thanks. Let's go.